What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. We about to get into part three and four. Um, you dig what I'm saying? What up, TikTok? We about to get into part three and four on the uh, who the F did I marry debacleation. Let's get it. All right, part three. Who did I marry? Uh -huh. So this is when he showed me a letter from Chase with the Chase logo at the top stating that he had been approved for a mortgage for excuse me for a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage or a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house so he was like we can't go over 750 and i said i remember asking him can you afford the mortgage on a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house because i know i can't this is when he explains to me I told you how I played arena football. I invested my money really well. So he said, I have money that will help pay for the mortgage. He was like, we're good. Like I'm I financially, I am okay. Um, he was like, that's why I'm able to get approved for $750,000 mortgage. So he told he me- He was able to get approved because he was using a CPM friend. Mm -hmm. He seemed like that type. But no, <laughs> go ahead. I'm just playing. His money was in different savings accounts. He said he had an account with Chase Bank. He had an account with U.S. Bank. And he had an offshore account. This is what he told me. The offshore account, I was like, why? And he explained something about, oh, the U.S. <clears throat> excuse me, the U.S. imposes taxes on money when you have a certain amount in, in U.S. banks. He was like, so everybody knows that it's smart to have some money in an offshore account. Y'all, look, I live paycheck to paycheck. I Again, I was like, okay, that's... Yeah, what? Hispanglish. Hispanglish. Whatever. I said, so you have the, so you have the money um, to, pay for, to pay for a home. I'm also holding in my hand a letter from Chase saying that he was approved for 750000 So, I went off of what I saw. So, we contacted a realtor. I won't say his name, but man, if he ever, ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man such an apology. But mm. we contacted a realtor in <clears throat> who was based in Cobb County. Because I was very adamant I wanted to move back. No, I'm Mary convinced you're driving to Mexico at this point. Get a Smyrna area um, in Cobb County, Georgia. Okay, her memory is absolutely. I was thinking the same thing. Child, I would have messed the whole story up. I'm like, was he in the. No, he. We went to Red Lobster the first. No, we didn't. Child, I would have forgot. <laughs> was fine with that. His whole attitude was. You know, you're going to be my wife, happy wife, happy life. So we met a realtor. I, I would find houses that I wanted to tour. Keep in mind that um, this was COVID. So at the time, we could not tour a home. It would, have to, it would have to be a virtual tour. So this particular realtor, we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. Not Cobb County, but nevertheless, it's in Douglasville. Child, I showed the house. I was in Douglasville. Okay. So we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. The realtor did a, um, a, a uh, FaceTime tour of the house. The house was, it was really a nice, it was a nice home. Four, five bedrooms, four baths. So we did a FaceTime tour of the home. And the nerve to uproot her from her three-bedroom town home. Ugh. Crazy. And the home was listed, I believe, roughly 400 and something thousand. I really like the house. I could see myself living there. I could see us living there. I could see us with the kid there. This is now April. Just for timeline purposes, this is April. Josh ain't even tell us about the first time. Like, how was it when we did to do? <laughs> I want to know. Okay, but all right. So he really liked that, that would explain the digmatization that she encountered in this situation. House, he was like, you know what? We'll put an offer in on the house. He was like, if you like it, because again, it was COVID. 
We weren't going to be able to see the house in person because the family still live there. So he said, um, I'll put an offer in. We'll see if this accepted. I said, okay. So he puts an offer in. He's telling me he put an offer in. I need to clarify some things he told me and the things that I actually saw. So for this house in Douglasville, he told me uh. he was putting an offer in. The realtor would call me because one thing that the realtor told us, he was like, if the woman likes the house, typically the house is going to get bought. So he kind of dealt with me a bit more than he did my ex-husband. Um, and again, this is April 2020. This is before we got married. So at the time, he was my boyfriend. So the realtor was calling me and was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I put the offer in. And what they're asking for um, is proof of funds. And I, and I didn't know any, I don't, I did not know anything at this time about buying a house. So I was like, hey, you probably need to talk to him because I'm not even listed on the mortgage. Like from the paperwork I saw, it was only in his name. Oh, so hey, oh he, no. um, he called him. I guess they talked. I was not there. Um, but I'm assuming that they had talked. So the boyfriend is coming. My ex is coming home saying, yeah, I talked to so-and-so. I sent him over the paperwork. The offer was approved. And <clears throat> they are going to try to do a virtual closing. First, we got to do an inspection. If the inspection goes all well, then we have to do a virtual closing. He t also told me that he put down earnest money on the home. He put down, I believe, 5000 He said, I, I just transferred the money over to the realtor's uh, account or whatever um, so that it could be earnest money for the house. So I'm just like, okay, great. He was like, so realistically, this is April. We should be able to get in that house um, by June. Okay, no problem. So this is what he told me about three or four days later i get a phone call from the re from the realtor and the realtor is like hey i'm just checking to see what you know what you what have money at that house oh um. so i was confused i'm at work um and i said oh i i was told that he put an offer in and the realtor was like he did i didn't know that he put an offer in and i said well why wouldn't you know like he told me he put the offer in and he um he had paid earnest money five thousand dollars earnest money and so the realtor was like well let me call him and find out what's going on with that because i didn't know anything about it so red flag of course huge red flag. so i call him and he's and he in true narcissistic nature he flips the script and he like goes off he's like cussing going off like he shouldn't excuse me i have the hiccups he shouldn't be calling you if he has a question he should call me because i'm the one that's on a mortgage he was like and well, now go off on him not on me oh it's you know it's gonna be an issue and i said well did you put the offer in with him or not and he said, no, I did not put the offer in with him. I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor. So I. Now, friend. Don't tell me you believe that. You specifically asked him that he put the offer in with the realtor. Why would it be a different realtor? OK, and then he's saying he put it in with a different realtor. So what did you say after that, friend? That's what I want to know. So I can give him the business. Uh huh. So for that house, a different realtor, a different never, same I house. I did not hear from that realtor again. So I was just like, "Is the house under contract or is it not?" He was like, "Yes, the house is under contract." This is what this is how crazy things work out. About three days later, on Realtor.com. I'm looking at the house because I was trying to figure out in my mind how I'm going to decorate. It shows the house is under contract. So, showed my boyfriend. My boyfriend's like, I told you it was under contract. 
he was like, I, I like, did you not believe me? And I ain't had the heart to say, hell no, I didn't believe you. <laughs> like, it seemed too good to be true. Oh, wow. um, but once I saw the house was under contract, I absolutely believe that, okay, this, it's under contract with him. Like, yeah, we're about to do inspection. We are about to move. Right. Um, and so we had driven by the house because, again, keep in mind, a family's still living there. So we had driven by the house. At this point, he was like, I want us to start looking for furniture so that way we can go ahead and order it. So when, when it's time to move, the furniture is ready because, you know, it takes like six to eight weeks sometimes um, for furniture to be delivered if they don't have it in stock. Like he was he was very methodical in planning and saying this is what we need to do. So we started going to Home, Home Depot, Lowe's. Um, because we had a printout of what the sellers were going to take. They were going to take the appliances. He had a printout. Let me be clear. He had a printout. So it said on there that they were going to take the appliances. So we needed to get a new stove, um, new refrigerator, new microwave, all that stuff. So we went to Home Depot and Lowe's and I, I went ham. I chose all these new appliances and <clears throat> here's where we get into the shopping all right y'all so the end of part three for me is given that would have been a huge like huh <laughs> what so, so, so hold on so you telling me the same realtor no 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 you telling me the realtor that we use to look up this house to get this house, whatever. You telling me that you didn't pay him like you told me to, but you ended up going to your friend, which I don't know who your friend is. Somebody lying. Somebody lying, and I would have been on edge ever since then. Ain't no shopping for the house. I ain't caring to dress up the house. What house? I mean, hell, I don't even know who telling the truth. Oh, I would have been so bothered. I don't like little white lies. It'd be pissing me off. So, uh, all right. Part, part four. four. So, 11, 11 we go to check. Home Depot. We go to Lowe's. I'm choosing all these appliances. He's taking pictures of this, of the, um, the SKU number. We have representatives helping us. And he basically explains to them, Hey, we're, we're buying a house. Um, we should be closing sometime in June can we order this stuff now can i can i put a hold on it like what can we do because <clears throat> we're not ready for delivery i stood there as the home depot rep said we can hold it in our warehouse like you can buy something and we can hold it people do it all the time especially with covid so i watched him pay um i want to say it was about three or four it was either three fifty or five hundred. I watched him pay a deposit on a whole new set of appliances for them, and they were going to hold it until we were ready for delivery. I watched this, so I was like, "Okay, okay, good deal." Like we got the appliances. Next, let's go to Rooms to Go and Ashley Furniture. What and appliances did they get for five hundred dollars? Fine, um, shower head, you know. What I'm a little bit of common, a couple rakes, you know what I'm saying, all. Actual furniture. So we went all around rooms to go. We went to Ashley Furniture. We went to American Signature. And I, I, I saw all these things that I wanted. Again, he's taking pictures of it. He was like, I can go online and order it. I didn't think anything of it because, again, I just saw that we held the appliances. So I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. Um... So April turns into May. May 2020 comes. Um, this is where things start to get a little interesting. May comes and obviously we had not done inspection. And I'm asking him all the time, what's, so what's the deal with the house? He was like, 
oh, because of COVID, they're trying to get someone to do the inspection. But the guy that they had, it was always something. The guy they had just lying. COVID, so they're going to have to get somebody else. And he's like, he's like 15 houses backed up. So it'll be a while. So at this point in May, I know I look crazy. In this point in May of 2020, I started recording. How is it not dark yet? <laughs> is everybody else wondering about outside? Okay. Um, audio diaries. I don't know why. I, it was some something just made me just start recording my thoughts in, a, in an audio diary. And I still have them. And I would I would save them by the date and um, I would just start talking about what's on my mind so I was like I knew I knew there was something something was nagging me like mm. but I I kept pushing it out of my mind I was like you saw th this is what I reminded myself you saw him pay for the appliances you know the house is under contract. You know that he told you that um, he's the one who put the house under contract. Why would he, like I remember saying to myself, why would he lie about that? This is so because he lied about the realtor first. He lied. He lied. He lied about the realtor situation first. But I can understand how you were behooved easy to verify why would he lie about that have you caught him in any other lie and at the time the answer was no um so i really was like maybe you just aren't used to a guy who actually does what he's supposed to do like i i was questioning myself and then answering my own questions so sometimes you got to talk to a real nigga inspection didn't happen Around mid-May, I found out I was pregnant. May 2020. Oh, when God, I found pregnant. out I was pregnant, he oh. was ecstatic, and I was like, oh, shit. The reason why I was, oh, shit. We don't even know how the first time was. And quite, quite frankly, I'm offended, behooved, and uncomfortable. You ain't even tell us how the digmatization did the digmatization. And I know, y'all, she gay. Oh, whatever. Everybody want to know about the first time. Don't matter. Straight, gay. I want to know about the first time. Just finish. Shit is because, number one, I'm plus size. Number two, because of my age, I was, <clears throat> I, I felt like it was probably going to be a high-risk pregnancy. Um, and I wasn't married. And that nagged i cannot tell y'all how much it nagged me there was a lot of internal <coughs> struggle in between my family didn't even know that he had moved in at this point i told them you know that i was pregnant um went to the doctor everything looked good um but again because it was covid he couldn't go in with me um, into the actual room so you know doing any sort of ultrasound doing the blood test because my hcg levels were really high so the doctor was like hey it might be twins we don't know yet um you're still kind of early you know along um they gave me a due date the due date was january 26 of 2021 um so yeah uh may found out I was pregnant so there was now more of a push into we got to get a house we got to get the fuck up out of here I'm not having a baby in Riverdale okay nothing against Riverdale but I ain't having everything a baby. against Riverdale obviously Baby in Riverdale so 12, 22 in the chat so we need we need to we need to find out what's going on with this house and so he was very he was on top of it he had an answer for everything um, he was like, you know, I'm gonna call and find out what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Um, he then magically told me about a week later, oh, they're going to do inspection on the, on the house, like in two days. 
So I was just like, okay, keep in mind, I'm, I'm taking his word for it. I'm taking his word for all this. So he's like, they're going to do an inspection. Um, once we get the inspection report back, then we will know what, you know, what we are going to be responsible for. What, what are we getting ourselves into? So, um, <laughs> I guess they did an inspection. He showed me an inspection report. Oh, no. It's the I guess for me, Lord. Um, the only thing that they said that the roof had just recently been replaced, which he, I remember he was very happy about. Um, and the issues that they, that there were for the house were minor. It was not, it was not a bad, because we did have a discussion about it. He was like, it's not, it's nothing that we can't handle. Then he said that we were set to close, um, the end of May. We were set to close the end of May. He told me it was going to be a virtual closing. You're probably like, what the hell is a virtual H hello. closing? Because again, he's saying because of COVID, people are not closing in the office. They're doing a virtual closing where um, you would need to electronically sign the paperwork. This is what he's telling me. And so he was like, we're set to close like just before Memorial Day. And so for some reason, again, there's still that nagging part. For some reason, I didn't start packing. I, anyone that knows me will tell you I hate moving. I've done it. <laughs> you already had a bad taste in your mouth when he first lied. Let's talk about it. When he first lied, you, are, you already had a bad taste in your mouth, but you still decided to go with it anyway. So after that, you knew like, mm, I'm a wait. That's what your conscience kept telling you. I'm a wait. <laughs> in my life, I hate moving, but I did not start packing up that house at all. I was just like, you know, I'm pregnant. My body was changing so fast that it was like I can barely keep my eyes open half the day. Um, and so, no, I didn't start packing. And I remember I did record again. I was recording audio diaries just about every day when something didn't sit right. I would verbally record it in the audio diary because I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something. That was the theme of our relationship. I don't know what it is, but I know there's something. Mm. Um, and so I remember talking to myself in my little prayer closet, because that's where I would do my recordings. And I remember thinking, what if he, what if we don't get this house? Like, what if we don't get, what if he's lying? But again, there goes that thought process of why would he lie about this? Like, who makes up? Like, that's petty. That they're buying a house when in fact they're not. And then he showed him when you all this paperwork, like, come on, you can't be that jaded that you don't even believe what's in front of you all right so now we're going to go into part five we're going to keep going all right part four so we go to home depot oh, we shit. go to lowe's okay part five who the fuck did i marry so I'm questioning all this stuff in my head out loud on my audio diaries. And then once again, I'm like, but look at what you, well, look at what he's giving you. Like he's paying, he, it wasn't a question about money. It was just a question. Right. Cause he had that bag. Y'all remember. You know, are we really, are we really about to move into this house? And <clears throat> keep in mind, he's paying all the household bills. He still is. So, We were supposed to close before Memorial Day. We didn't. There was an excuse. There was always an excuse with him. Always an excuse. And I didn't know enough about the process to 
question stuff because I really wasn't involved the way I should have been. And yeah. it was giving me <laughs> You a- think, sis? Huh? Wasn't involved is an understatement. <laughs> a lot of anxiety. So I'm pregnant with a lot of anxiety. It's the pregnant um, for me. And if push, if I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with y'all, I was not expecting that I was probably going to have a healthy pregnancy because oh I was stressed. And what I was stressed about is I didn't know what was going on because I wasn't really involved the way that a normal relationship would be involved. Just being honest. Oh, um, we know you ain't got to so worry. So we about- did not close around we move now into june this is now going into june around june 5th i looked at the house again on realtor.com the i house. don't know what made me do it other than and i don't mean to sound super spiritual i know that people are like you know you may or may not believe in god but i'm telling you i believe with all my heart probably the holy spirit was like look at that house on realtor.com i'm telling you so i looked at the house on realtor.com this was around june 5th it showed that the house was off the market Mm. and i remember being like okay wait what is what does that mean what what does that mean because ex-husband is telling me we're about to close on the house we're about to close it's our house Mm. we got furniture da 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 Um, He's also telling me that he's been in contact with the realtor, his friend, who was telling him, you know, this is what was happening next. Here's what's going on. So the guy that we initially worked with apparently is completely out of the picture. But again, I was not heavily involved. So I'm just like, let me look at the house. I see it's off market. What the fuck does off market mean? Like now What does off market mean, sir? <sighs> Girl, continue. Now I'm really freaking out. So it shows the name of uh-huh. the real estate agent uh-huh. for mm. the seller. Right. I don't remember her name. I called her and I said, you know, my <clears throat> excuse me. I said my husband and I even though I wasn't married. Oh. My husband and I were looking Girl. at this house at 123 Main Street. And we really wanted to tour it, but now I'm showing it's off market. Is it not available? Or, you know, I, I pulled that card. And she was like, oh, no, ma'am. Um, the home closed yesterday. It closed June 4th. Again, there are certain dates I just remember. Child. Um, and I said, oh, it closed June 4th? I was like, really? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and she said, yes, ma'am. She was like, um, my, my sellers sold the house. And I was like, oh, man, okay. Well, I said, my husband and I really want to, you know, we love the pictures of it. And we're getting ready to start a family. So I would have loved to have been able to, oppor- you know, have the opportunity to see it. I asked her something. I don't remember the specific question I asked her. And I don't even, I I know why I asked the question because I was anticipating that my boyfriend at the time was going to have some sort of excuse. So I asked her something about the buyers. And I remember, and somehow, again, forgive me, I don't remember the question I asked her. But the answer was that it was an older white couple older white couple so i get off the phone with her i record an audio diary and in the audio diary i specifically say okay there is no house he's going to have to get out of this lie somehow right because now i realize at the very least he was lying yeah i would have felt like He would have tried to take me up out of here. I would have felt like he was a. I'm trying not to say it because y'all know TikTok and YouTube be tripping, but a killer. (laughs) Okay, continue. About um, him being the one who 
who was under contract. I knew enough about that. So I was like, what, um, how was he going to get out of this? Again, I'm list I've listened to the audio diary in 2024. I literally said in that audio diary, how was he going to get out of this lie? And I was trying to think of ways on how he's going to do it. And something said to me, because I say it on the audio diary, I said, um, he's <clears throat> going to say it's a bad deal. And he's going to say he wants to pull out. Mm. Y'all keep in mind, I am pregnant. So I had a decision to make. As ugly as this decision was, I made the decision, you're about to have a baby with this man. He's paying all the household bills. <coughs> Let don't him. you don't you say it. Get out of the lie. Oh. And that's what I did. I purposely made the decision that I knew he was going to come back and I knew he was going to give me some bullshit on why he couldn't buy the house because he didn't know that I knew that house is already sold. Mm, 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 mm. The house is already sold. Um, and this is the part where I said, I'm going to be honest, even though it's going to make me look bad because most women in their right mind would have would have been like, I'm Ran. Out. Ran. Trap. And I didn't. Oh! So, um, Sure enough, he came home. He didn't really say anything that day. The next day I asked him about the house. And he said, my friend, the realtor, um, he was like, I'm talking to him because something's going on with the interest rate. And when he said that, I felt so much relief because I knew that I had been prepared for, he's going to give you some bullshit. So when he said, there's something with the interest rate, I said, you know what? If the int This is literally what I said, y'all. If the interest rate isn't good, then we shouldn't move there. We should probably let this house go. We should cancel whatever furniture we, we ordered or, you know, appliances. Women have a different type of patience that I don't have. And I'm completely aware that I'm a woman, but I'm a different type. I wouldn't have been able to hold it in. And let's just look for another house. I said I would like to be moved. Oh, so you mean, what you mean is the house off the market. Ain't it? Ain't it, Sean? Ain't it? <laughs> okay. Before the end of the year... I'm I said I really off. don't want to be nine months pregnant moving into a house. I would like I would like to be done with this before then. And he was he the way I said it was so calm and he was like, okay, he was like, I'm gonna call the friend, the realtor, and tell him I'm backing out of the house and I'm gonna see if I can get my earnest money back. And I remember looking at him, I was standing in the kitchen and I cocked my head to the side and I said, okay, get your earnest money back. Okay, get your earnest money back is crazy. What money, Sean? What money? Ah! <sighs> and let's find another house. Girl. And so that's how that lost first house mind. fell through. So, um, fast forward. I'm looking. I keep looking at this to see how much time I have because you know they only give you ten minutes. Child, so I gotta pee. this is part five. Part six is coming up. But um, subsequently, what ends up happening the next week, which is mid June, I was at work, oh, um, and I started cramping, started bleeding. Like, I know I'm going to let her talk. Um, and at this point, my doctor, I had just had an ultrasound earlier that day. So I went to work because the ultrasound was was fine. Oh, I got to be. I went to work <laughs> and the cramping and the bleeding started. And I started crying because I, I kind of knew what was going on. 
God is great. And um, my doctor had called me and told me that when they did the ultrasound, they did not see a heartbeat. So she was like, this pregnancy is not going to be viable. God is great. So I'm crying. Uh, excuse me. You got to excuse me. In a hysterical. God don't make no mistakes. And now we're going to get into part six. All right, I'm going to part six, but I got to pee first. Y'all don't even know I'm gone. Now, how many red flags got to be given to you to know that it's a flag, friend? Okay. Girl. For the love of uh, the rent. Because she ain't even said nothing about the sex yet. So clearly it wasn't all that. But for the love of him paying the rent. She sold a soul. Child, y'all just tune in to part six and seven. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hey, yeah.